Wait, that's Vicky. Vicky's had a sex change. Now Vicky yeah. looks like this. That's why she went to Korea for the sex change. And it worked. Yeah, Vicky, man, it worked. This is what Vicky he looks wants, like. He wants to be all on his own on the screen, Steve. That's what it is. Oh, I see. Well, you know, it's the, he's in, he has an ego. I understand. So there you go. So. Okay, I'm ready. I have Are you ready for your links. close up? Are you ready for your close up, Mr. Dill? You ready? Should we start the can we start the show now? Are you done? Are you good? You look pretty. Got out the, the link to the fans. I'm very good. All right. <laughs> we're, gonna start the, we're gonna start the show here, kids. So everybody just sit there. Don't worry, David. I got this because we're already live. Um, I got this. Hey everybody, welcome to the show. And now we are gonna run the credits. Oh yes, we're, yeah, let's do we're that. Sure. we're let's already show. live. And we know Vicky's watching because she's right there. So now Vicky's name is David. So congratulations. Vicky, you look much better. So we're glad you went to Korea for this exchange. Thank you, Stephen. It really works. (laughs) This is 2OF Entertainment. We are live. Hello. Hello. Three of us David, where have you been? I've been hiding away. I've had some <laughs> adjustments done. David is a new gender. It's David Vicky. Once a woman, once a man. Once a woman, once a uh, new, new gender. New gender. Yeah. Depending on the day. Yeah. Depending on the day. Yeah. It's, it's been so successful, I don't even have to get out of bed. You know, just lie <laughs> around. Just lie You're around still in bed. Joy. Uh, lie around and enjoy myself. I mean, enjoy yeah. life. So when someone tells you to go f yourself, now you can. Yeah, yeah. All right, Several times go. backwards. That's yeah, so right. nice. Well, Vicky, for everybody that is missing Vicky, um, Vicky is in North. I mean, South Korea. Sorry, I always get those two things confused. <laughs> Vicky's in South Korea. Um, I think she's at Love Island with her brother, you know, because she's from the South. Um, but other than that, Vicky will be back, I think, in a, in a sh- not in this, she won't be back till next year in the States, but at some point she'll be joining us again on the show. She's not a spy? Oh, she could be. And now that the South and the North Koreans are watching this, they'll probably take her out. And shoot exactly. Her. Um, yeah. So maybe if you guys in the South or the North need her address while she's staying in Korea, you let us know. We'll be more than happy to give her to you for the reward. Um, uh, you think back. you know it, but <laughs> but anyway, you know, so she'll be she'll be back um, on the show. She just uh, where her Airbnb will not let her talk after a certain time at night, and our show apparently is loud, so she has to figure out how to do our show. What time is it that, uh, there now? In Korea, it, it should be yeah. afternoon. Like uh, I don't no, know, no, it no. should be like it's, it's eight like, o'clock. It's like, it's like nighttime. Hold on, a second. Seoul, Korea, Korea, right now. No, no, it's no, no. Seoul, Seoul, Korea is nine thirty-three p.m. Right yeah, now. you see, it's about oh. nine or ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Should, it's late. We, should we should we be quiet? Then it's not the whole game. So we have to be quiet. So I there's, I mean, if... no, here it's three thirty. So yeah, there you go. No, no problem. Okay. Yeah. Well, right. for me, it's for it's two uh, thirty. Congratulations. So, um, yeah. Yeah. He'll be oh, so Vicky, half hour. then, Vicky is not the spy that came in from the cold as such. <laughs> that, she's, the spy, she's the spy that's gone to the cold. So yes. Leaving the warmth of... Uh, I mean, she put out a video tape. yesterday. It was very cool. Um, and it, had, it was shot at night in the dark, and it looked like a bunch of people climbing over a wall. So I was very excited to see that was good, with good music. So it was exciting to yeah. see that. So there you go. Yeah. So you guys that miss Vicky, go to you can, on our channel, go to Vicky IRL. And you can see Vicky's video. And yeah. see so your new friend Tyler's dog it's agrees. Your new, new friend is yes. right. Adam. Adam's dog agrees. So Adam, what are we going to talk about today? I put the title. You told me we we're going to talk about why people choose topics. No, the topic is about stories. Story. I okay. told you. All right. Well, let's why people story. like stories. That's the topic. Okay, so let's tell a story. The, the other was unofficial. The, the other was unofficial. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I have a story. There once was a man from the Tucket. No, never mind. Anyway, um, so what story? But it's connected to the to the. If you think about why people uh, uh, like topics, right? Right. right. What, why people yeah, like top, topics? Or stories? A, a topic or story, it's the same thing. So my question today is not uh, what's the definition of the story. We all know it. Right. Is there something that it's not a story? 
Yeah, I bet, uh, guys, I've got to stop you here because I'm on the wrong show. Because when I saw we were talking about topics, I thought you were to we were going to talk about the classic. Maybe we are on the wrong show. Okay, let's go. Classic. Bye bye, guys. See you. <laughs> it's the, I thought you were going to talk about the classic 1970 chocolate bar called Topics, which has yeah, that's a yeah, which has in itself it, because it had lots of it had the same sort of things in it as as squirrel shit which was a lot of nuts and new guy and all sorts of stuff so yeah that was a topic i like those i thought that's what the show was going to be about a bit of a retro show but well and uh, no one knows you know that the uh, topics are actually uh, a nice bite <laughs> like yeah, that bite smoke, yeah. <laughs> we never talk actually about the topics we don't have the time because because the topics are actually very uh, broad always yeah. so we never talk we just you just touch a little the topic you know very very little but yeah. well that was my second interpretation of what's going to happen today i thought we were going to be talking oh, about God. the tropics, but not, the tropics. And no one knows what we're going to talk about because yeah, everything is we, we're going to talk about uh, stories but everything is a story so 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 the question to the question is there yes. something that is not a story in our lives they're all stories they all you know they're all they're stories all, yeah. our whole culture is built on stories yes Start off with exactly with, uh, with your with you and the other lady in the garden of eden you know adam and the other uh, you yourself uh, that's a, that's a, that's that's a very interesting uh topic a topic uh a myth you're talking about because actually i'm reading a book and that's why i, I chose the topic you're, about myths about religious like, myths hey, he's reading yeah, a book, reading a book. congratulations <laughs> i'm reading but i'm not reading books books i read ebooks <laughs> oh. uh, on the computer okay Does that count? All right, so tell us about the book you're reading about the myths and about adam not doing any because there was a uh, the, the 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 book is by the bernardo castro you know the the the, the philosopher uh and it's uh it's called more than allegory and it and okay. it, it, it it's talking about uh, the religious myths and what's their important importance in the transcendent truth in no, general there's no there's no it's just it's a fable it's a yeah, a fable. Fable. It's a fable. yeah it's a little more complicated like that because he claims and i'm i i, I agree with it that uh, okay. those stories the religious stories yeah are not literal stories not literal truth they cannot be yeah. literal truth okay. so if you take them literally you reject them for sure because your intellect says what the hell they are talking about they yeah, yeah. they ate uh, an apple and became this and there is heaven and hell and stuff like this but he's not limited only to the christian stories he's talking about you know stories of indigenous, indigenous people in right. amazon in india in australia mm -hmm. and uh, uh how they can uh entail inside uh, uh symbolism that leads to transcendent truth so he's he's arguing about that and it's very interesting it's not that big but it's got a lot of essence in me, like everything that he's talking about. You don't have to agree. I don't always agree with what he's saying. Right. But sometimes he's very, very much to the point. You know, it's it's incredible how 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 to. It's it's like he's uh, offering you like kind of truth in front of your eyes that you. It, right. it was always here, but you couldn't see it. Like right. it's it's articulation. It's articulation of words. Also, you know, he's very good right. at that. But let me ask you and, this. So let's say we, you look at whether it's Adam and Eve or Noah or whatever, or you look at the indigenous people of pick a, pick, a, pick a place. But some of the stories they have, they never met, but their stories are similar. So in some in some of these stories, there's some yeah. fact to it. It's just that, you know, it's like they talk about the first emperor of China came in on a, on a flaming dragon. Okay, well, if you don't know what a spaceship is or an airplane or whatever it is, right? And then, and, you, and who knows if, if there were dragons or not dragons or they were mythical, whatever it might be, that's how you describe it. Like today, we're going to describe a UFO as yada, 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 yada. Right. So Thousand most, years today, from now. Most, most people see a, a, a spaceship today as a flying saucer because in the 50s, that's how it was predicted. You know, well, no, it was in 19, people... it was the guy, it was a guy over the, it was a guy in 1940 something that was flying from Fairbanks, Alaska to whatever. 
and he saw the oh, nine sure. the nine things and he's the one who coined flying saucer yeah. but in an interview he said that the nine things he saw were trans translucent like you could see through them and they just look saucerish but they weren't and there's a book i can't remember the name that they there's a whole bunch of interviews he gave that goes into a lot of detail but my point is is that how technology evolves and how people evolve if we get that far a thousand years from now if we start talking about flying saucers of today people are going to look at that and go flying saucer that's like us saying wow you came in on a flying dragon because there'll be a technology that they're gonna be like it's called the xyz yada yeah. yada yada you're like why didn't they know that so it's the same but type that's of what, thing so that's what uh, uh, i think that that adam was alluding to when we, when mm -hmm. we before we started the show when we were communicating about topics our stories because right. there are things happening in the world around us and depending on how uh, developed the public is at that point in time they have to be spoken to in story-like ways so right. they can understand it so you know that or uh, you know sometimes understanding is not the uh issue it's not the goal for them it's sometimes for example how i would interpret the the drug i wouldn't say it's a spaceship it's it's something that makes you feel that he is very glorious you know it's uh it's giving credits to him that he is not ordinary person he's coming with a dragon uh, with fire but so you have to be that, afraid of him a, and, but that would be a direct reference to what they already experienced in their lives at that point in time correct. so they would have so there would have been somewhere along the line some mythical creature or or something which was extremely good extremely bad or extremely powerful gets the yeah. name of dragon and so therefore something which is very powerful like somebody dropping out of the sky um you know everybody would have known if you dropped from the top of the cliff to the bottom of the cliff you'd kill yourself but if all of a sudden you were dropped uh down on you know on the breath of a dragon then that could for 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 the development level of the particular people who are hearing that story could be understandable could be not understandable could be acceptable Oh, I can accept that. Yeah, it, it's, you know, it's acceptable, it's like, but it but it creates an emotion. It's to like, create it's like an emotion. The, the whole flood thing, like Noah and the Ark, right? I was thinking about that um, last night. Like all the animals came in two by two, because even the most primitive of, of societies would have understood if you had a male and female of a species, it could procreate and it could, you know, and it could happen all over again. What about a seahorse? Yeah, it well, depends yeah. on the symbolism. It depends we, on the symbols of, of of a given we're talk, we're, civilization. We're talking, yeah, we're talking about Noah and the Ark. So they all went into the Ark two by two. So but, that but made I a lot of sense then. That story made sense. There's, the there's great a guy flood, named... the great flood. Everybody experienced the flood. Right. Everything got destroyed. So if everything around them, the flood, the flood, the flood. <laughs> if everything around them got destroyed but the only thing that was left over for them would you know uh, to think, well, how, how are things how are things developing okay they're developing because this god enabled all these yeah. animals two of them to it, wander into the ark and he saved them there's a guy that's, named that's, brian carson i think and what brian carson says and a lot of people now that are studying history are thinking whether it's true or not i don't know what and he says it's in the book whatever la da da he says the ark wasn't a real ark ark like it described it's more of a vessel um and what they did is they took dna samples and that it would be like an advanced technology so it's going back to if you will like ancient aliens or the anunnaki or these people they're saying it's just, it makes as much sense as you know this guy Climbs down, go, hey, uh, yeah, yeah, but you're still you're still down. trying to interpret a, a religious story literally, and right. this is, and and look, uh, uh, there's another yeah, problem how, in in, how in how our civilization it, right sorry, now because how else, how else would it be experienced other than literally? Would, would, would uh, sim symbolic? They 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 cannot be literal. They are all crazy. <laughs> if we if we were as a nomadic people sitting yeah. around a fire trying right. to understand the world we lived in and somebody had a little bit more understanding than me they'd want to slowly help me develop and right. so they wouldn't come to the idea that it's not true you say, well, well you know this is this is this is why we're all here guys all simple stuff 
you know, all Jack and Jill stuff. You know, it's uh, you don't start kids off with, uh, you know, reading Chaucer or something like that. They can uh, learn English. No, you start them off with Jack and Jill and then you slowly help them to develop and to question and to move on. And I think that's where these a lot of these religious stories come from. You know, mm. and not I, Christian, but, uh, 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 you know, the, unfortunately, I think they're all I think they're all malarkey. I think the truth what? will never know until you actually pass. And here's a question from our fan, Don. Don watches our show religiously every week. David doesn't know Don because he hasn't been here for a while. Don's question was this. So Son of God, after three days left, right, gets killed, left, whatever. And there's a book that says actually Jesus, um, after the three days, they took him to India and he lived to be about 67. I read that book. It's somewhere in my library. It's a fascinating tale and has all this historical fact. Her question then is there's 12 men. Um, and then Mary, which there is a book of Mary um, that is, or a book of whatever his girlfriend was. The 12 disciple men wrote a book. He says, why didn't they write it? Why didn't the 12 disciples write it? None like of them they were there. All the, all, none of them. All, all the books were written no, after everybody died. Because the, the early the early Christian church yeah. believed that the Messiah would come back in their lifetime. And so nothing was built. No, there, there were no structures. There was no structure around the religion after about 100 150 years they realized like the second generation of people oh yeah i remember yeah. my dad talking to me about this jesus guy well he didn't come back mm -hmm. so but but oh, that's faith so that's so a the, scam but so but the faith was their faith was that's still fine, but it's a scam so basically up until as we talked about before in the show i think it was in the, the 600 ce period we were we were always praying to gods with an S. Yeah. And then all yeah. of a sudden the crusader, you know, the guy with the funny hat, cute shoes, that guy um, comes along and kills everybody because you're playing to the wrong God. And I just I have a problem with that. Well, it wasn't necessarily it wasn't necessarily. The Pope that but uh, but this is the Holy uh, Roman, uh, the Romans killed most most Christians b b before. Well, they, the Christians, I can see that. But then the Pope had his own crusades to go do his other thing. So he helped kill some people, too. Just, yeah, yeah, but this is for, this is this is fundamental fundament, fundamentalism. That means that, uh, that that's the, that's the, the mistake they make. They take literally uh and this this the stories the mythical stories that are taken literal, literally and uh this creates a problem but, but again right. adam but, what how how else could they be could they symbolically be symbolically yeah but, yeah, but if you, you those have, are symbols you, yes and they were talking in symbols they were talking in oh some guy wasn't there and then he was there um you know, all these animals disappeared and then all of a sudden everything comes back. Well, that could only be if there was a male and a female of them because they're all breeding again, et cetera, et cetera. I think mm -hmm. in many respects you kind of, you know, it's, we came from, when we started moving out of larger groups of, as homo sapiens, of, of 100 to, to mm -hmm. 100 and 200 and 300, yeah. it got incredibly complicated to continue to hold people together in one common cause and and right about that same period it would seem that all these stories seem to develop to make sense of the world that they, that they were living in not to make sense of the, not, to make sense of the, not to make sense of the world that we're living in now not looking back on it but no we're all sitting around this proverbial campfire and uh, somebody's trying to tell us about you know why shit happens but the science, nobody knows. That's the problem. Like yeah. I said, there was a book that was written about Jesus. And, and and I remember watching this guy's interview. I bought the book. And he's an archaeologist. But like he's, he's not like a, a pseudo. He's a real one. And he said that they have found historical proof that after he was put on the cross, brought down, that his disciples came, wrapped him up, took him on a boat, and sailed to India. And then there's um, historical documents that actually show he lived to be like 68 or 69 in india so i found that fascinating this is about 20 years ago i was like okay this is it's a story you see you see right. stories but, but actual, good stories are guy. very fascinating right but, but like, the question why guy. yeah but, I, but that's it but my problem is is that and then when you get these guys that talk about i'm gonna i'll go back to the anunnaki oh that's ridiculous we're not from a, we didn't and i'm like it's no more ridiculous than the, the bible story 
it's no more ridiculous than the Old and New Testament. And Dawn brought up a really good point in the comment section for you people that are reading it. She said, you know, after uh, they killed him and he and he resurrected and he left, he didn't do anything. And it's kind of like there's a difference if you look at the Old Testament and the New Testament. Well, and the Old well, Testament, the of course, that's the, that's the Jew Testament. That's mine because that's yeah. the proper book. Well, the after three Bible. days, after yeah. three days. But wait, let me finish was... my thought, though. My... In the Old Testament, God was busy. He smited, he, he killed, smiting, he people, flooded, yeah. he did everything. God was a busy guy. He was a cool guy back then. God was like, hey, hey. And then all of a sudden, in the New Testament, uh, God went on holiday. It's sort of like, uh, there, here's my... What do you mean he went on he holiday? Said, he went on holiday. He didn't do anything in the New Testament. But, but, but who was Jesus? I, I, apparently he was the son of God, right? So if he was God, the son of God, he was be, God. He was okay. God right. so incarnated and right. Right. Uh, right. Okay. Embodied, embodied. He didn't do anything for 33 what years. What do you he mean did he stuff. didn't do anything? <laughs> for 33 years, he did some stuff. And then after that, he does nothing. If you look at the Old Testament for like 5,000, 10,000, whatever it is, God was busy. God was smiting this, he was flooding that, he was parting the sea, things were being turned into rocks and salt and blah, blah, blah. Well, he did a big job at that time in the yeah, Old and Testament and the New Testament. Yeah, yeah, look, look, it's a modern, modern, modern he's, uh, interpretation. He's a modern God now. He's like, I'm retired, I'm done. Good luck, I moved to Florida. Oh, no, I mean, no oh, it's, he, yeah. it's, it's a continuation of the story. Yeah, he was, he, he was busy, it's, it's, but uh, I think you got it wrong. Of he course, was, he, he was busy. He was, he's he, not busy. He left. He I talked a, to him the other day. Hey, in Miami. He, was a, he was a chippy for about what 20 odd years. You know, he'd have to be out building stuff. You know, he's out there with his hammer and whatever doing stuff. So he was busy building houses, putting up barns, you know, all that sort of stuff. He was, he was a busy guy. You know, he's he always was. a busy guy. No, he stick, but no. <laughs> He was well, a carpenter. He was a carpenter. Look, he didn't look. Like our, he was an unemployed carpenter. You know, I mean. But, but do I you imply, that. Stephen, do you imply that God is not busy now? God is. I Can I tell you? I remember Time Magazine. God's not busy now. They wrote God's a thing in the now. Time Magazine. It was called, Is God Dead? I don't think he's dead. In nature. But he's dead, right, right. But I, no, no, Time Magazine had a big story on it, right? I think God's on holiday. Because let me, let me if you're God's children, this is where I have a problem with it. I do believe there's something bigger, but I don't think it's what we think. Anyway, if you're God's children and I'm I'm your daddy, <laughs> who's your daddy, baby? Anyway, if I'm your daddy and I see all the crap with 8 billion people that's going on and I have the four horsemen and I've got this and I got, I'm coming back. I'm going to be like, kids, enough is enough. Like, no, 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 no. But if God's alive somewhere, I think he's an old Jewish guy in Miami Beach. He's not doing it. He's retired. I hate to tell you that. He's getting his pension check. What do you he's mean? Are, are, are the universe in pause and he's retired? I think he's retired. I think he's done. He did his job. Yeah, his uh, does does, does not does not the, 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 uh, the, the earth uh, go around uh, the sun? That has anything to do That's with God. Not... That's gravity. What That's do you gravity. mean? Who created it? It created itself? <laughs> yes. Apparently. According really? To really? How? <laughs> how? According to scientists. Well, you have the Big Bang hypothesis, which is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I, yeah. The string is interesting. Now we have scientists that say we live in the matrix. We have scientists that say this is a computer simulation. I can go through all of it. Look, the look, the, the, don't know. Well, so, even 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 science is stories, and they're con yeah. co convenient stories, yeah. but they are based on some evidence that we have. The Big Bang. We have uh, two two have no uh, very strong. We have two very strong evidence for, and I want you to debunk it. We have okay. two very strong evidence for Big Bang. Yeah. One is the cosmic background radiations. It's the first light that came mm -hmm. out sure. from the universe. Sure. And uh, this light, we can see it now. We can see sure. it. Right. At the beginning, they, they thought that it's a noise somewhere. In it, but then they understood that this is... The first light that came, this is the first yeah. evidence. The yeah, second yeah. evidence, and it was, uh, I don't know, like 400,000 years after the Big Bang. The right. second one is the expansion of the universe. We know it. It had been, has, had been confirmed. And not only that, the expansion, uh, uh, right. like four or five billion years, it's stronger. Mm -hmm. it's, it's faster. Sure. So those two evidence, they show that there was a Big Bang. And I think that this story... Mm -hmm. Although it is a story, it's based on evidence, it is real. It's the, the most real thing that we have about the uh, beginning of the world. I can bring in 
Brian universe. Carson or anybody else, and they can debunk it with uh, ten thousand other stories, and that's the problem. So once again, you have to give us know. you 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 called it you called it a, uh, a serious thing. Think, you have, think. but you have to debunk it. Well, debunk it. Here's my here's the problem I have. You look at when someone builds a simulation. Right. It's if you look at this, the, how will you build a sim like Sims or any war game? It starts off the same way we started off at. Like there's this thing it accelerates faster because your program can do it or AI can do it. So when they talk about the Big Bang, I'm like, okay, that's cute. I mean, that like that's a simple hypothesis. We got it. Boom. This. It's not simple. I just told you two evidences which are undeniable. Okay, that's great. It's very, that's very. It's a very simple hypothesis to get from a to z it's it's it, because before the big bang there has to be something before that no so that's why, no yes, because the big bang no no no, no look before the, the word before implies time the time was created in the big bang there was no time before time <laughs> there was no time before is <laughs> time is man what right time, time is man time. he created time Time. Time we've created the time. Nobody else has created time. We've created it. It's for man. Man's created it. Time is linear. Time is like that. For the universe, there is no time. There's no beginning. There's no end. It's just it is. Yeah, but there is an evolution. Isn't an evolution that the stars, uh, the, the planets, uh, right. flow around they do their, the stars they do their thing and the and the and the moon base well, that uh, the moon is a it only it's time. Moon base. Yeah, there's yeah. no end to this conversation. That's for sure. Oh, I think it'd be fun. I love it. these are the best conversations. Anyway, but my point is, is that stories the overlords whoever uh, those are stories too. Those are stories yeah. too. Those right. are stories too. But the overlords who run this, they give you this book, The Fable, and they say, you're going to follow this because we need to control you. How do you control people? With religion. Because if you do something bad, you can either go to heaven or hell. So we try to keep people in this little box. Yeah, but you could look now at, what's you happened could look is, at is it the other way around. Through. You can look okay. at it the other way around. I, 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 to, be, to be honest, I, I agree with quite a lot of that. But outside, outside of that, my personal okay. point of view, if okay. you look at if you look at – Let's say you own a particular car, uh, okay. years ago, a, a classic car. You could buy these Hayes manuals where it told you everything about the car, you right. know, how to make it, all the nuts and bolts and everything in it, why it all functions, why if you pull, why if you pull that lever, that rang that bell. And and so for this, this chaos of Homo sapiens racing around the planet, mm -hmm. you know, trying to kill each other and, and doing lots of negative things, you could say that religion has tried to box that in for positive reasons by giving you a way of of showing you a way to live. Religions the, cause oh, more death than anything. I wholeheartedly agree, Stephen, but that's not the argument. I'm, I'm not the point I'm trying to make. <laughs> I know, but I'm it, just saying, though. But, it, but it, it, it could be that it was designed really to, to help people go mm. from birth to death. Okay. Yes, that, that is true. Faith has helped people to live, especially in older times, which living was much, much more difficult. Yeah. They had been suffering. We don't know the suffering that people before us have been through. We the don't old even imagine it. They to be 800, 900 years old if you read the Old Testament. What? They lived better than we did. Come on. I mean, like if you read the book, Noah was, I think, 800 when he died. Moses was like 900 when he died. Yeah, but who you're, made yeah you're talking about who? one or two persons and, and they're, they're mythical persons. Oh, but are they? That means that they're not literal. They're not literal. They uh, didn't live 100. But we don't 80. know that. We were not there. Who's to say we didn't really live to be eight or nine hundred years old? Uh, uh, have have you have you met age? have you met anyone 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 who was one hundred eighty years? So what's what's the record of people oh, have I reached? I think the hundred oldest. Yeah, you see, like one hundred and twenty-six. Yeah, okay. You see, look, we know of. Look, it could be that in these stories that are told about people, to to actually to help them understand that this person is incredibly wise. Has ex yeah. had experienced so much in life that they could be of value to you if you followed their particular way of, of doing it or the, the expression, or, you know, the, the statements that they make. Mm -hmm. And why were they wise? Because they lived 200, they were 200 years old, mm. which makes them, which makes, you know, exactly, oh, you know, he must be, you know, very like, wise, really, yeah, because he's lived that, that, 
that amount of time. They know what they're so, doing. They ate, so, they ate good food. That's why. They ate good food. All kosher. No. Um, well, still, you need you need uh, like today's uh, medicine and stuff like that. And still, we have this medicine. We don't live 180 and, and days. Medicine, and medicine kills you because it's the worst crap. Some of it kills you yeah. more than your sickness kills you. So yeah. that's medicine yeah. isn't like all it's cracked up to be. That's just another scam to a point. I mean, oh, like, well, yeah, okay. Let's real. not debug medicine now. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's well, you, conversation. Mind you, though, crack crack cocaine is is what it's cracked up to be. That's what I understand. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. You know, so, you know, He's here till Thursday in. next. He's here till Thursday, folks. Tip the, don't forget yeah. to tip the late staffers by the deal. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I mean, I mean this, about, me, you know, that, this Vicky body that I'm, that I'm in now, you know, it's kind of... Yeah, right. It's, it's you loosen, got it all loosen, feisty. Loosen. Yeah. yeah. Man, it's loosened me, loosened me up a bit. But, um, you know, but those three guys don't know what's going to happen to them. But coming, but coming yeah. back to the stories thing and right. uh, living yeah, outside for a while, at least, the religious thing. Uh, I often talk about you know, the movies. We watch a movie right. or we read a book, for example, which is, you know, classical stories. Which there are stories. Movie, yeah. Which is a movie in your head as opposed to being in your eyes. Exactly. You're watching a movie and you are feeling, you are like becoming the protagonist, you know? And right. uh, you feel, you feel what's going on. And sometimes you cry, you're mad, you are, it, it triggers emotions in you. Although, you know, from the beginning, even if the story says, you know, that the movie says that it's based on real uh, facts and, and stuff. Uh, we all know that it's this, the movie that I'm, there are actors, there is scenario, there is a director, you know, right. uh, lights and everything like that. We know it. And well, I would have to despite the thing, that. we 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 still uh, live live in it. Another there story I'll people, tell you. There are lots of people in soaps, for instance, who can't, who genuinely cannot tell that it's not that it's not real life. They become so engrossed in it. Okay. When when uh, David, when you are dreaming, do you realize that you're dreaming? No, you. It's 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 like it's like real yeah. at that moment because it happens in the subconscious. And subconscious, that's the way I believe also uh, that's happening, what is happening with religious story. It's, it's uh, something identical with, oh. with our uh, 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 dreams. The I dreams are story. trying to tell you something. They're trying to tell you about your fears, about your anxiety, about things that, uh, you know, are in your mind and trying to find a solution. So uh, your mind is creating those stories to tell you something. Yeah. Or even well, if you're me, not aware let, of let a problem that you have, that to, to want to point you to a specific, you know, uh, a problem that you have, and you might not be aware of it. Yeah. So let me put this forward. Then, are you? Uh, could it? Could it be that movies and TVs are the worst thing that we could ever experience in our lives? Worse. Yes. Simply Why? Simply because. Simply because they are forcing a set of imagery and emotions that don't belong to you because going back to your argument but, going back but to your no, argument, no 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 going back to your they, argument the dreams are a way of you processing things within you within yourself a movie or a tv show is by definition somebody else's dream which is being projected into you is that yeah thing? is that a good way to have a story told to you but all the stories that outside our our personal story, the story of our lives, are uh, imposed stories to you. Are they? They're all imposed. But Everything is reading, like is, like is reading a book then a, a better way to deal with a story, or is having it literally? I don't think it's about it. better or, or or good, good and bad. It's about uh, the thing in itself that a book is a story, is yes, a story. I, Yes, but it's not, it's nothing seem, else. For many, for, for many people, a book doesn't appear to be uh, so socially uh, damaging as as TV or a movie. Not in America anymore. Be, they want to take all these well, books off the shelves. Look, they are social da damaging. Uh, there <laughs> are movies. Nazis. There are movies which you enjoy, and there are movies which you don't enjoy. So, <laughs> my favorite movie, Dandy does it for a buck. That's my favorite movie. Yeah, I mean, no, I never heard of it. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, the other one's it's, it's, Circus of Filth. Yeah, but but yeah. you see, you see that there is 
a fictional story, you know that it's fiction, but it makes right. you cry. Why does this happen? And uh, something else, uh, what oh, David said, stupid. that they're because imposed stupid, to us, you... but look, yeah. they're imposed to us, but we are becoming part of the story. We are kind of uh, looking on the story from the uh, point of view of the protagonist, in a way. We are becoming, we are identifying oh, okay. ourselves with the protagonist. So what Sometimes, is the not always. Between, what's the difference between that and these these biblical stories it, it isn't exactly the same no no uh, the biblical it's, stories it's, it's, no the, the biblical we're sitting, stories we're sitting around a, a, a fire now where we're sitting around a tv no no this is this is scenery which is happening the story but the, the story itself the, the 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 myths the religious myths they are they they aim to uh, give you a glimpse of transcendental uh, truth and the movies, uh, they, they cannot do it. They are stories like I stories, of, like you're saying about a story. Makers, a lot of cinema makers would disagree with that. I think a lot of cinema makers would say, hey, that's the reason why I make my movies, you know, to get you out of your comfort zone, to put you somewhere else. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. It's okay. This is what the story does by default, to take you out from yourself. You are watching something else, a, a story that is not story of your life. It's it's a different story. That means that means first of all, then my question is why we like the stories, is that our brains like stories. Everything in our brains is stories. We uh, uh, interpret our stories, but and uh, but again, go back with the, the you know the visually. Now we're visually told stories through through TV, through the internet, through you know. Yeah, this is the medium. Yeah, I mean, is that is that a healthy development? Should it should it not be better to, because, yeah, I mean, it's 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 a lot of the times you, you feel like the whole look, messages the messages are thrusted towards you. And how many look, people, you can how, how you can still define you that? can still go by the fire. And sometimes when I go to Poland, we do it because in Greece uh, they are not allowed. In Poland they are allowed. We sit by the fire. We have sausages and we, you know, cook. The sausage, yes, and we talk stories. Yeah, we should do that when I was a so, kid. So, 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 so the TV and the movies they added a new medium and new way of telling stories, a new storytelling. Yeah, yeah, Books have they, also. Have they, have they, has has that addition to our lives made us made us better at it, at the way that we look at stories? I think yes. Because yeah, it's, although it, it, I think yes, but 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 it's not a question about better or worse, in my opinion. It's about the richness of experiences. It's it's a different experience than 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 listening to a story someone said by the fire, which are which are both are nice. I think they don't dismiss anything. And if there is a new way of telling uh, uh, an artwork that I create, it's a story. It's a story. Yeah, I would agree with that. Oh, hardly. Yeah, of course, it's a story. But it's a different way, it's a different medium because my story in the artwork is immediately imposed all at once. Like there is no time, uh, uh, there is no time in the story that I present, there's only one time, like one moment, but your interpretation needs time because you look around, you know, for details, for what he's trying to tell me. Is he trying to tell me something or what is he trying to tell me? Why blue? Why not uh, yellow? Why this form? Why two people? Why do you think that would enhance your art then? If I was to stand in front of it with my with my AI glasses on and hear you talk about how you, all the things that was in that art would would that make it a better piece of art or, or no 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 or, or it's 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 not about better or worse i don't go into this kind of uh no, but judgment you say, uh, if, but if, now if, now i have your name right I have, i'm privileged to own one but i have your name and i look at it and and i think okay right and, and, and but it's just me isn't it it's just me and that name now is is the next generation of, of the way that art could be could be portrayed, that you are going to tell me a, a story about your art. Does that would that is that a good thing that that I hear your voice talking about what I've got on my wall here, or is that a bad? I, thing? I don't know. For you, for you as an artist. Yeah, I, 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 tell me again the question. I don't understand it. You mean having my artwork there? Does it add something, or having well, now, me talk about it? Yeah, because the, the, it could be that, I mean, 
you have it now with you the three museums you have these headpieces on and everything okay uh, it's great because you know you're seeing an you see maybe an object which you've never seen object over there to the left is a heater oh great no i know it's a heater but when i'm standing in front of your art right you're just telling me about oh i put this in the art i do that in the art i do yeah. this whatever but does that make the art better for me hearing your voice talking about it as an artist or i don't or should, or should you just say to me you know what you look at it cold you just you just let it sit in front of you i do i don't sleep. think okay i understand now i don't think that uh, it takes out something from the artwork because anyway you would um interpret it in your own way of course uh, if i talk about it there's some gu guidance uh, gu guidance uh, that i i guide you somewhere you know but still i cannot tell you everything that there is about the story on the picture because uh if i could tell about it i wouldn't make it as a, as a visual art there are many many information inside the artwork itself and uh, i don't believe that any kind of artists actually have total control of their work no one uh, it's the same way like saying like i have total control of my life nobody has total control of their lives we know that we actually have very minimal uh, control of our lives so whatever i say about the work i don't think that i'm making it worse or, or, or better it's more information now if this helps you to realize something on the artwork good if it doesn't also good because it was it wasn't about that it wasn't it wasn't about me talking that's why uh, there is a um, uh, there are artworks now that you you see the artwork and there is a lot of explanation uh yeah. it, it, and uh, but uh, but this kind of art they go together the explanation and what you see they are created to be together in my uh in my words they don't i don't have to tell you anything so, about it so, so if i'm sitting around this campfire with you in poland eating these sausages and you're discussing something you wouldn't feel that it would enhance that story by, by then just reaching down into your bag and showing me one of your paintings uh well it will create another story or an additional story to the to the story itself but sometimes it depends it depends always uh sometimes when i heard you know explanation of the artist it just it kind of destroyed it yeah sometimes sometimes it enhanced it like uh, sometimes when I look at the, the abstract art, is a classical uh, example of this because abstract art you can make anything out of it, anything. And uh, and uh, sometimes artists come and tell you, you know, I had this and this in my mind, well, and it, it guides you a little. And this this might help, although they will tell you that uh, I don't need it. You don't need it. Uh, the the, the, the but, picture speaks for itself. So whatever you feel with uh, this, whatever you feel. Uh, and Steve, then you know, you're you're a serious collector. Do you mm -hmm. want? To, do you know a lot about all your art, or do you, does it just please your eye? Well, when you say a lot, do you mean do I know about the artist and his province, or do yeah, I? Yeah, well, maybe was, did the artist told me what he was like, thinking when he was painting it. Yeah, the latter. Okay, so, so no. Would, would, that, um, would that would that enhance your collection? For no, no, I don't really care what the artist thinks. I if I know the <laughs> artist and I like the artist. I don't. I mean, I may read some stuff he he writes or talks about or write, read an interview, um, but for the most part, if I like it, then I'm like, all right, well, we're going to buy that. And I don't really care about what hit signifies to the artist, okay? I, because so the, I the painting has his soul in it, if you will. Yeah. And so I will me, draw that. I will draw that experience from you with your art, right. because where we started off today talking about stories yeah. is that if that if somebody can tell a story in such a way. Mm -hmm. it's irrelevant as to whether or not it's factual or not right it just it just has its place there and then it's a good story and art's yeah. a good story art's a great story art is one of those things where you look at it and you're like wow that's well, art's a medium it's a tool the, yeah. the, the, the artwork tells it's, stories it's like it's just like cinema when you go to the you whether you watch it's it, another form of another form of expression yeah, it's you sit there and you're like, wow. Like, I remember the first time I saw Patton, 
you know, with George C. Scott and the yeah. war scenes, I was like, as a kid, I'm like, wow, that's awesome. Or you see Fantasia. These are just experiences. And art is an experience. Like when I got Adam's piece that's behind me and I opened it up, I was like, wow. And it's those are experiences and you enjoy that. So an artist telling me, oh, I was, I don't really care what the artist thinks. I have to enjoy it. I have to enjoy what you did because I don't care if it's worth a dollar or $50 million. If I don't enjoy it, why would I buy it? I have to look at it every day. I'm not looking at it because I'm like, oh, it's going to appreciate. I'm looking at it because I yeah. like it. And again, it and again I, run that, I run that parallel against stories. Regardless of whether yeah, that thing. story is, is true or false, the yeah. fact that it's that it's colorful and it brings you some form of comfort or some form of joy that that's that's the thing that keeps the stories stories rolling now whether or not they then turn into you know some sort of religious message or they get hijacked on the way right you know and a whole new show <laughs> but yeah but I agree with that, hundred percent. Yeah, but I didn't get the true or false because there are stories. It doesn't really matter true or false. What does it mean, true or false? In art, they are all fabricated. They are all fantasies. Uh, but what? What? Yeah, even but, even but, if, okay. But what I mean by that is like Stephen. Let's say off. I can't put words in Stephen's mouth. But I'm looking at a piece of art and I think, oh, you know. That that's a, a dog or a, or a cow or whatever. That's what I see, and that's what then and and that's acceptable to me, even though it's probably a fridge. But to me, <laughs> that's what that's what I'm looking at. But that's acceptable, and so therefore I accept that as as, as my story, and I, and it helps me, and I can move on. So I don't really okay. question about you know what it actually is. And that goes to right back to what we started, spoke about right at the beginning of the show about these stories, about these topics. It's not relevant if they're true or false. What's relevant? But what, is well, I don't understand the true or false because, for example, in my works, what you see is symbolic. I, I, a lot, I use a lot yeah, of symbols. You, that, means, you are in, that means yeah, the, 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 the cow I don't symbolizes know something. If I there's a cow, I've never done a cow, but. <laughs> I don't know what you. I don't know what you mean by symbolic. I don't understand your. Interpretation. Symbol is something. A symbol is something no, that is pointing it, somewhere. That is. I that is. I, I don't understand that. I'm sitting by this campfire. I don't understand that. Uh, symbolic. Yeah, the fire is symbolic. What of eternal life? Of you know. In fact, is, everything is symbolic not, in life. I believe that everything is, is symbolic. Because yeah, there is are. there is an underlying uh, reality which is deeper and more real than 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 the reality of uh, of our of our lives on the oh what's that? This is what happens. Start talking about symbolic. The there you go. There you see? Yeah. You're back. The symbolic end of the show. There you go. Yeah, so, <laughs> but, but, yeah. but, like I said, like I said, it's not my true and false is, and I know that this is the thing that keeps tripping you up because I use that statement. Yeah, yeah, I try to understand. Like, my true and false is that I don't understand your the, your, how you define symbolism uh, because I'm just sitting around this campfire with you and, you, and I'm just hearing this story. You haven't seen the work. If you see the work, then you, you will know. Yeah, but you're talking now about your own work. But, but, but the symbolism that's coming out of these stories, out of these topics, you know, uh, yeah, you have to have an, ele an element of you have to be slightly more advanced and uh, to understand the symbolism of it. And I think as we grew, as we as our as we you know, as we moved out 100, 200, 500, 000 people in settlements, that there was maybe time and effort put into the fact that though, oh, do you remember that story about Noah and the art? Okay, well, you know, you see that goat, male goat over there, you see the female goat over here. You know what they're doing? Right, okay. That's where all the little kitty winkles come from. Oh, okay. Oh, so that's the reason why he took two in then and not 20. Yeah, I understand that now. Yeah, I have a problem with all that. Uh, looks, uh, look, it's not always everything about understanding. Sometimes it's about feeling, sometimes it's about because the artist can express anything. They can express ideas, they can express feelings, they can express fears, they can express anything. And uh, if they want to uh, put that outside of them, because that's what they, we are doing. We are externalizing things that are inside. That's, and we're objectifying. I, I, my 
definition of art is a bridge between subjectivity and objectivity. My subjectivity, which is creating the artwork, is doing it on something that will be objectified, like an artwork. I mean, something that everybody can look at. And since I have exposing it, that means that I'm okay with it. So that it, it, it fits the story that I had inside. So now it's taking its own life. Now, if you will understand it, if you will connect with it, 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 it's not up to me anymore because look, I, I cannot make people, you know, by force understand it or make them feel it, you know, it's like that. It's, but, it happens okay, so, or it doesn't. So why would, why, would I, why would I invite you to sit by my fire? again when you come back round again and to share i don't know if you don't like me and you don't like no, my stories you shouldn't <laughs> listen listen and to and to you know and to share but share sausages with you for the second or third time you know okay if i don't if i don't understand your stories if you just if they're just a one-off then i have nothing on that i want you to come back and help me understand the world i'm living in okay so this, if i just what if I told you that I don't understand my stories because there's a force well, uh, we uh, talking say, well, through me? <laughs> we just say, well, you're a crap storyteller and don't bother to come back. Yeah. Oh, by the way, you know, didn't like your sausages. But you know, well, that's that's up to you to choose. It's not up to me anymore. I cannot make art to you for you. I don't make art for you. Show. It's a need. It's a need that I have to. I ha I have to externalize. Now, if this will make a a base for a dialogue, a connection, a talk that we will have, it's okay. If it's not, it's still okay. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to buy, like when it comes to art, since we're off the religion thing for a second, when it comes to art, I want to feel the art has soul. Whether it's a, a, a picture that someone took, whether it's a painting, whatever it might be, I want to feel that that art has soul. Well, I just, so I just, I've just, never just commissioned out, anything because of that, because it has no just, soul. It's just but but what does it mean? Look, what does get, it mean? You see, because take out wait, wait, art and put in the word story, because that's what we're talking about. If I the story, have, oh, I read those... some I let you read a story like when I read Sea Biscuit, the book. I was yeah. like every page. I was very engrossed in that story. I was like, ooh, yeah. like I really. I, there's some books Stephen, that and they have a soul. But I, but, but I have a question now yeah. because we're talking about the religious myths. What you're saying now that it, it, it has to have a soul, is it literal or symbolic or symbolic. a metaphor? It's you see, metaphor and symbolic, yeah. It doesn't have you a see, real that's, story. That's the way, but it's, yeah. still, it's still a story because you said, it's a short story. You said the artwork that I like needs to have a soul. It's a story already. It's yeah. a narrative. Right. But it's so a symbolic it's, story. It's not a story right. that you would say, I like the artworks who have a red color. That's yeah, totally right. literal. That's, you see, it's, right. it's literal. Yeah. But when it comes to the religious stuff, when I, I read the I read the Bible, old and new, cover to cover, because I wanted to know and I wanted to be able to read and have intellectual dialogue. And I've read the Book of Enoch and the Book of Mary, and I've read all of it. Okay, so I've all done that. I find things very interesting in there, and I'm like, this is interesting. And some of this, and then I would read a book by like um, a linguist. That's like, okay, well, what they really meant, and they mistranslated it because the King James version was translated from whatever, from whatever, from whatever. And somebody actually did like real translations of it, and they're like, they're they're misquoted, they're misdis. They made it for the the church, for a lack of a better term. Well, it's they, like they, I read the book made, of the they dead. Made it for that and, historic and the, moment. Right, but I also read the book of the dead, and that's a fascinating book to me because the book of the dead is really almost. The, the King James version, but kind of a little different. And when you start reading about religion, whatever whatever religion it is, they all have a, a, a base, you know, but then they go from their base and then that's when they start, you know, they start veering to the left, the right, straight up, down, whatever it might be. I find that fascinating. For me, it's the knowledge of. So when guys talk about, oh, there's, you know, Anunnaki's and or there's, a, okay, cool. That to me is just another form of, for lack of a better term, religion. It's like, no, oh, this could be. This could be so to me. It's it's more of a knowledge thing. And but I read a book. If okay, I, enjoy it, I, I have good. a question. Yeah. Uh, what what do you uh, come out with the story of Adam and Eve, and heaven and all that? Well, first and of the, all, the, the, the a, tree, the apple, and everything. Yeah, yeah, what do you so make out of it? I think for well, first of all, before Eve, there was either her name was either Ruth or Lilith. There was a girl before a Lilith, her, right? Lilith. Yeah. Um, and so Adam couldn't get along with her, so I'm like. Whoever wrote this spot on about women, um, 
And then Eve comes along and like most women doesn't listen and does stuff. And to me, it wasn't anything. It's like, because the way the book is written, it's like, if you bite and you have knowledge, knowledge is bad. So if I want to keep the people down, I'm going to tell you knowledge is bad. You should be listening to what I tell. So to me, it's like, that's not good. I didn't like the serpent thing, the devil, the but. I'm like, okay, it's a cute story. I got, you know, three naked people having an orgy and some sort of a, you know, a thing. If you go to Brian Carson's thing, it's basically, it was a lab um, that it was guarded and they were, you know, doing DNA testing on whatever. So to me, it's sort of an interesting, for lack of a term, fairy tale. It's, it's, it's like they want to keep you down. It's like, don't eat the apple, you'll learn. But you don't feel that it's trying to tell you something? For example, I can tell you my interpretation of it. I think that uh, before they uh, they were happy at the beginning. Adam and Eve, everything was fine. You know, they were going yeah. naked and everything. Yeah. They didn't feel oh. anything. Right. But then yeah. they uh, God gave them the uh, the tree of knowledge, right? Which from took they they, they it was a, a, it was kind of a temptation, right? Right. So they took they took it, and what, suddenly what happened? they felt that they are naked they uh, uh, for for me the interpretation of it that uh, uh, the, the thing before was the state of humans that were like animal state they didn't have yeah. the uh, self reflection you know the intelligence okay and the tree of knowledge that's why a tree of knowledge and when they took the tree of knowledge they started to be humans and they started to have, uh, you know, self-reflection and everything. Right. They got naked. So this is the symbolism be be behind it. That, that's yeah, that's what I think about it. My whole problem yeah. with that whole story is, goes back to, and Dawn actually wrote story. this. Like it got, it, my whole problem with the whole story of Adam and Eve is, first of all, if I'm this omnipotent power, I'm not sticking the tree of knowledge in your little, your little happy world, right? I'm going to be like, if I want to just keep you as pets, there's no reason for me to say, now listen, do you know the minute you say don't do something, someone's going to do it. So first of all, I have a problem right there. It's like if you want to keep everybody just stupid, happy, and dumb, there's no reason to put the tree of knowledge. There's no reason to give them the apple. And look, we all have apples. Anyway, um, but there's no reason, hey, apple, pay me. Um, but there's no reason for any of that, right? It, because it didn't make any sense. So to me, when I read that, I was like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever read. Like was, I literally was, said in my mind, I thought I thought like, the Big Bang was the dumbest thing. I, 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 I said, "Who's the you're idiot the point. that would stick you're a tree?" The point, it's not yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's not written for you. It's written for a group of people sitting around an open fire, trying to yeah. understand the world they live in. Yeah, I, I, I think. it doesn't matter if you think through it. It doesn't matter. Yeah, but they didn't. Why? Have an Why does it matter? Think because they weren't developed enough to think no, exactly. The same way that we, we don't. Here's the, the we problem: do. we don't know that. You have to understand. I've read all these. Oh, books. we know that that they, they were well, not developed like us. We, listen, we there's technology that dates back thousands or tens of thousands of years. Yeah. We weren't as stupid that, as the anthropologists have us believe. And all of that technology is supposed to be alien and not no. Homo sapiens. That, that they never said that. They just said it's. We have technology that they can't explain that dates certain periods. You have yeah. look at the pyramids. Look at the, what they did. They still can't. They come up with all these hypotheses and how it was built. They still can't explain it. So they can explain point, what the, how you built the pyramid. They come up with. They sandwich. know how they build it. They don't know squat. They can't tell you how they built the pyramid to save their life. And here's why: If you ever go down to Homestead, Florida. There's a place called the Coral Castle. I've been there. Read the book on it. Watch the video. This guy was taking 5, 10, 15 ton coral pieces of stone. This little 150, 120 pound guy moving them, built a coral castle. And what he said before he died is I knew and I figured out the technology of the Egyptians. And there's a news report that these kids peered over the wall. You can read it and find it in Miami Herald, whatever, back in the 30s, that said they literally watched him have a 30-ton coral door, and it's there, and he, they said he, he was just moving it with his finger. So there's something to how they built it, and scientists could come up with, oh, they built a ramp, they did this, they roll Bull. Once again, we weren't there, we don't know. I have a problem with absolutes that you don't know. So that's no, why you I, say you don't know. 
No, nobody, like you said no. about the Big Bang, you just don't know. Nobody you don't did, know no. that the Even scientific. scientific no, it's a hypothesis. You were not there. Yeah, but it's That's based based on evidence I that can we make have. All the evidence in the world on anything you want, and it you can't. Uh, you can yeah, because it has to go through all the scientific community, and they have to agree on it. And the scientific community is a bunch of morons that think they know more than everybody. And then when somebody does some pseudoscience or reads something that they don't agree with or finds something, they'll know that. How, wait, wait. The intern that we had wasn't by aliens given, or the scientists did it. Which, which, which is what now? And for us to be able yeah. to talk like this and live, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, it's, it's a lot of scientists that came together, you know, slowly by time to create all these things so that we can enjoy it. I don't know that. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't believe in what Darwin wrote either. So I have a problem. Well, I think. With, I, I think on that evolution. point. On, on that no, point. No, no, we're kidding. No, we don't do that. We don't do that on Adam's show. We just go until we're done. Um, <laughs> oh, we're never done. done. Yeah, there's, no. There's no the point. Problem, there's no point in that because people have already left. So that's fine. No, they're still here. And they'll come just, back for more. We we won't just I mean, we, we don't up, care. We do okay. we do I hate to, Adam's show we don't do for the people. We do it for us. This is the like this is the most engaging <laughs> stuff we do all we do. It's just for us. We care less about the fans. <laughs> fans can come and go. We do this for us. So but no, but the problem I have with all of it, everything, unless I physically in my eyes see this, nobody knows. You can explain it to me, you can do all you want. I want to but see but they have seen it. They have seen no, it. They are not guys, witness. Guys, there's no they, going on. And on we and on. are witness to the because, cosmic background uh, oh. microwave. Uh, uh, the first slide. Guys, let's, see, uh, guys, let's, just let's just can this micro back background for another thing. Uh, David's trying to name the show. <laughs> David's got to go. No, no, we just no, 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 no we just. Go By the way, the Stephen, the problem yeah. that you have is your problem. It's not a that community or society it's problem. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. And on it's that just point, your problem. <laughs> on that point, it's wait, wait, time before to we go. end, don't forget to subscribe and like. We'll be live next Monday as well. God knows what we're going to discuss. Vicky. Well, your problem's uh, by the sound of it, Stephen. But I know. Go. Vicky, we may or may not miss you. Anyway, everybody, we'll see you all next Monday. Thanks for watching. Rebroadcast of the show. Bye-bye. Uh, Tuesday. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Take Cheers, everybody. Bye-bye.